Hello and welcome to the QA Underground. In today's video we're going to be covering how to create a C-Sharp Selenium page object framework using Visual Studio 2019. This video will be part one of a multi-part C-Sharp Selenium series. If you are not already a subscriber to our channel but enjoy the content, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button down below as we upload lots of testing related videos each week on a wide range of topics from integrating AI into testing to setting up automation frameworks in multiple languages. With that out of the way, let's get into what we'll be covering in today's video. So for us to be successful in creating a C-sharp Selenium page object framework, we need to do the following. First thing we will do is add the dependencies that we need. And then we will create a local driver builder class and then create a wrappers folder with a web driver factory inside of it. Then we will create a browser target and finally, we'll wrap things up by creating a common utilities class. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new project inside Visual Studio 2019. We're actually going to go under Web and Console, select Tests, and then we're going to select In Unit Test Project and select Next. We'll keep that .NET Core 3.1. We're going to name our project Selenium Tests. We'll select Create. Now with our project created, we can delete the automatically generated unit tests by simply right click delete. And now we need to add our dependencies. So we'll go up to project, select manage NuGet packages. And then in the search bar here, we're going to actually type out selenium.support. So we'll just select selenium.support here and then we'll simply add package. Select OK. And then again we'll go up to project, manage nuke packages in the search bar. We'll search selenium. And then we need selenium.webdriver. So we'll select that, select add package, make sure our package is selected and select OK. This one will ask you to accept the license agreement, you select OK. And then we're going to add a third dependency and we'll go up to again manage NuGet package. And we'll go into the search bar, we'll type out selenium.webdriver. So this one we're going to grab the Chrome driver, so we're going to select selenium.webdriver.chromedriver and select add package, again we'll select OK for our project. As you can see they've been added into our NuGet folder under dependencies on the left here. So the first thing we're going to do is add a new folder. We'll call that folder wrappers. Click add. Inside that wrappers folder we'll add a new file. An empty class, we'll call that file webdriver factory. Select new. So now we can add our dependencies at the top here. So we'll change the system to using openqa.selenium. Below that we'll do using openqa.selenium.chrome. Inside here we're going to change this public to an internal class. And then we don't need this generated public class. So we're going to remove this code. And we're going to add a public virtual iWebDriver. We're going to call that create local Chrome driver. Inside there we're going to create a Chrome options. Call it options equals new Chrome options. Below that we will set our options, so we'll do options dot set logging preference. And inside there we're going to set our log type dot browser and pass in our log level dot all. And then we'll simply return new Chrome driver and pass in the options that we just set up. And with that we are done with our changes to our WebDriver factory file. We'll file save. Now we're ready to set up our local driver builder so we'll go to our project, right click, add new file with an empty class and we're going to call this local driver builder. So we're going to start off by adding our dependencies at the top. 
we'll start by adding a using selenium test dot wrappers and then we will add a using open QA dot selenium I'm going to update this namespace to be selenium test dot selenium utils and I need to go back to our wrappers and update the namespace to selenium test dot selenium utils dot wrappers we'll save that we'll go back to our local driver builder and we will update our using statement to reflect that new namespace that we added so we'll just add selenium utils to the namespace for wrappers so again, I'm just going to get rid of this automatically generated class. We'll start off by adding a private read-only web driver factory. We're going to call that factory. Next, we're going to create a public local driver builder. We're going to pass in web driver factory factory inside there we're going to do this dot factory equals factory next we'll do a public virtual iWeb driver we're going to call that launch and we're going to pass in a string for browser and a string for the starting URL. Inside there, we're going to do a var driver equals create web driver. We're going to pass in a browser target. We're going to do driver dot navigate dot go to URL and we'll pass in the starting URL. Then we will simply return driver Next, we're going to do a private iWebDriver. We'll call it create web driver. We'll have it pass in a string of browser target. Inside there, we'll do a switch. Pass in the browser target. Inside that switch, we'll do a case. Browser target dot Chrome. Then we will return factory dot create local Chrome driver. Then we'll set default throw new not supported exception. Then we'll pass in a dollar sign and then inside brackets we'll call the browser target is not supported local browser type. Put quotes, parentheses in that line. Oh, it looks like I need to make a change. This public should be actually internal. And then to fix this browser target error, we need to add our browser target file. So we'll go up to the project, right click, add new file. Starting from an empty class, we'll call it browser target and select new. So we don't need any dependencies here, so we'll delete that. We'll add this to the Selenium Utils naming space. So Selenium Test.SeleniumUtils. And then we're going to actually update this public class here to a public static class. And then delete this auto-generated public method inside. And then we're going to write public const string Chrome equals Chrome. And that's it. That's all we need to do to set our browser target. So we will save that file. So now we're going to add a new file. Starting from empty class, we're going to call it common utils. We're going to select new. We're going to add a using in unit dot framework. We're going to add another using 
openqa.selenium. Then we're gonna add a using system.io. We'll get rid of this public method. And we're gonna create a public void print logs method. So this will allow us to print the logs from the browser. So we'll pass in a string called log type, iWebDriver, driver. And inside here we'll do a var underscore logs equals driver dot manage dot logs. Then we'll do a try statement. So we'll do try. Inside the try we will create a var browser logs equals underscore logs dot get log. And within there we will pass our log type. And we'll do an if statement here. So we'll do if browser logs dot count is greater than zero. We will do var file path equals dollar sign block path dot get temp path. Then we'll append some messaging to it so the console logs will create their own. So we'll do console logs dash GUID dot new GUID. So basically the name will be unique to each one and then we'll end it with dot text. So it'll be a text file that's created there. After that we'll do a file dot write all text. File path. Then we'll enter the string of text that will be at the beginning of the file, which is begin log. After that, we'll do a for each. We'll do var log in browser logs. Make a note here of what we're going to be doing. So log the message in a file. Then we'll do stream writer sw equals file dot append text and pass in the file path that we created above. And we'll do sw dot write line and pass in the log dot to string. And finally, we'll do an sw dot close to close the file after we've written to it. And then we'll simply add this to our test context. So it's added to the test run. So we'll do test context dot add test attachment. We'll pass in the file path and a string for the name of the file. And then after the try is complete, we'll add our catch, which will be console dot write line and simply say no logs present if no logs were found. So this is a great method for printing our browser logs in order to catch exceptions that can occur during a test run. Here's a good spot for us to stop. Today we covered how to create the foundation of our C-Sharp Selenium Framework project. In the next video we will go over how to add the base test, page class, and test method that will utilize the framework that we have started today. Let me know if you like this style of video by hitting the like button down below. And if you are not already a subscriber to our channel but enjoy the content, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you on the next video.